Hi, everyone. I'm Joy Donnell, a consulting strategist for If Then, and you're watching This Is What a Scientist Looks Like. So if you tuned into our LinkedIn Lives before, you saw that we have been sitting down talking to innovative women in STEM. Right. And if then it's all about supporting women and girls getting into STEM because we need more voices at the table to think through life's biggest problems that are coming up. So I'm really excited to be talking to Daniel Chum. She is, oh my goodness, just I've, I've gone from a fan to I'm a whole air conditioning system at this point. Okay, I'm with full HVAC at this point with Danielle. Uh, so just to drop you in, Dr. Danielle Chum combines her training as a cancer immunologist with the skills she has learned working in biotech to make science exciting and accessible to all. Danielle is from Ghana, West Africa, and in graduate, in graduate school, she developed a passion for scientific communication for lay audiences when she participated in a TEDx Buffalo event, giving a talk entitled Guardians of Your Inner Galaxy. Translating scientific jargon into everyday accessible language, her talk was an introduction to the fantastic fantastic inner workings of the immune system. Danielle also accomplished explaining her thesis work clearly and concisely to a lay audience in the three-minute thesis competition at the University at Buffalo, where she was the first runner-up. Since then, she has made it her life's work to bring science to anyone with even the tiniest interest and to make science fun for everyone. And as an If Then Ambassador alum, Danielle is dedicated to increasing visibility of women, especially Black women, as role models for young girls. So Danielle, thank you for being with us today. <laughs> thank you for such a wonderful bio and introduction. <laughs> It's all true, right? Like, not bragging, just stating facts, right? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. So, again, you know, you heard at the, at the top of uh, this conversation, we're actually calling these chats, this is what a scientist looks like. Mm. And uh, you've been known to kind of lean into that phrase. So I'm going to drop a little visual of something. I'm like here, right? And uh, could you tell us the story of when you posted this on social media? Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who are not seeing what we have up, this is a, a, a tweet that Danielle put up from her Forged Onyx account that says, this is what a scientist looks like. Show the children, especially the children of color. This is what a scientist looks like. And she is looking fierce in her blonde mohawk in the lab with her lab coat holding up all the accoutrements of a scientist so danielle would you please drop us into this moment and tell us a little bit more about about what happened when you posted this <laughs> up? What, what led to this what to this post this was such a this was a very interesting picture because i'm holding in my hand it's called a 96 well uh pcr plate and it's just 96 tiny, tiny holes. And usually whenever you run a plate that big, you expect something to go wrong. It's just, you, 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 you know, you pray to the gods of PCR. That's what, uh, the, you know, the general assay is called. And I remember we run the assay and everything came out spectacularly. I was so excited. This was back when I was, this is my first job outside of, out of grad school. And everything just looked so good. As you can see, I'm laughing because I'm just, I was just like, oh my God, it worked. And uh, I told my, my, my colleague, I said, can you just take a couple of pictures of me being excited about this result? And so I took the pictures and I was having a great hair day. Um, they, they had one of my favorite uh, colored gloves, purple. And so, and I, I, you know, I had blue lipstick on that day because why not? And then I put the picture on Twitter because I think that growing up, you could have never told me that a, a scientist is someone with a blonde mohawk and blue lipstick. Like, what do you mean? A scientist is a serious person and they're buttoned up. And that's okay too. That can, that can also be a scientist, but I think it, scientists come in many forms and shapes. And so I wanted Number one, I wanted to share the fact that my PCR worked. And so I was joyful because usually when people run PCRs, it's, it always comes with some tears. Um, but I also wanted to, I wanted to send a beacon out to anyone who thought that 
being a scientist was a certain, you had to be a certain way. I wanted them to see that, no, it's, it's who you are. It's how you, you come as you are. And, and that's why, how, this, why and how this picture happened. So yeah, it's, it's a celebratory picture actually. I love it. It's like a <laughs> celebration picture. That's, and isn't it so important to also document those moments, like document those unexpected wins when it's so easy for something to go wrong and for you to have not been laughing and smiling in that moment? Uh, yeah. Um, I can't even express how important it is to big up the happy moments because a lot of times in scientific research and even in life, you you don't have a lot of highs. You have a lot of lows. You have a lot of learning. There are lows, but they're also learning moments, right? Um, and so you have a lot of them. You, you learn from your mistakes. You learn how to do something and how not to do something. And so I think it's equally important to document the low moments, but you should not dwell too much on the low moments. And sometimes it's hard because you can go months without any positive result. Months. I mean, I can't. There were days and there were months in grad school where nothing was working, um, but then one thing will work, and that will be the turning point for your project or for whatever question you're trying to answer. And it's important to celebrate that because you have come this far. Like you didn't just show up and it worked. You put in the work. You put in the the questions, like the the solving ability. You were asking, well, if I do this, then what happens? Ha ha. If then, um, so. <laughs> That you know, you so put in the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it's very important to celebrate uh, big milestones and milk it for as long as you can because sometimes the low moments can take a while. And if you milk it, you will have something that you can reach back to and be like, oh, you know, there are happy days ahead. Oh, that's, a, that's beautiful. I feel like this is actually a perfect segue into something that comes up quite often lately mm -hmm. in a lot of media, right? We're, we're seeing a constant diagnosis of women having imposter syndrome, mm. right? And mm. it, the, within the true definition of it, that's actually a doubting of one's ability, right? Mm -hmm. The doubting that you have actually done the work and put in the work and are deserving of being in the spot that you have achieved finding yourself in, right? Yeah. And I know, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit beforehand of like a, that term. Do mm -hmm. you think that imposter syndrome is the same thing as an imposter moment? Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that it's good to have a healthy amount of doubt in your abilities because it stops you from being overconfident and from, you know, coming across as a bit too arrogant. But the problem becomes when you doubt yourself so much that you stand in your own way. Um, it's unfortunate that the way most women are raised were ways to doubt our abilities, um, just the way society is set up. And we have to do a lot of unlearning from getting out of our own way. So we have to do, there's two things we have to do. We have to get out of our own way, number one, and then we have to deal with everyone else that's in our way. And so I think that we have imposter syndrome. We work through it by getting out of our own way. But then we have imposter moments because people around us are in our way. And so then they will say or create moments that make us doubt, oh, do I belong here? Do I deserve to be in this space? Is my voice big enough to be included in the conversation? The answer is yes, yes, and always yes. Yes, you have worked this hard to come this far. You weren't just gifted this. If you didn't belong here, how did you even make it through the door? And we have to believe that yes, people will try and get in our way. It's unfortunately the way of society and we have to change that. We have to change that. Um, so I think that by getting out of our own way, we kind of work through the syndrome in my humble opinion. Um, and then when we're able to move through the people who are creating moments and poster moments, that's when we start seeing true success. And so I think it's a combination uh, of both. But that's, that's my take on it. 
that's how I've been trying to deal with it. So, yeah. As you were saying that, it reminded me of something that you had said previously in an interview when you were talking about STEM is exciting and colorful and there is no mold because we all like belong here, right? <laughs> and that's kind of part of what that imposter moment that can come okay. in after you've done work of mm -hmm. even like that self-compassion work of realizing, oh yeah, like I've earned this mm -hmm. and the systems around you, some of the doubters around you is seeping in because you're, they're thinking, oh, you don't quite fit the mold of what we have come to think um, <laughs> is supposed to be occupying that spot yes. that you're in, right? Exactly. Um, and it, it, it is such an important, you know, reminder to just be like, no, there, there isn't, a mold, you're here to be probably the first you that has mm -hmm. ever been in mm -hmm. this situation. Mm -hmm. And so now we're in, you know, th this really unique time in, uh, in society where there are more women who have been stepping into roles that have never before been occupied by yeah. a woman, right? Like they are literally the first one ever <laughs> yeah. in this in this role. So th there isn't uh, this, you know, long lineage of, you know, other women that have come before and have navigated this space and let alone navigated it in this very modern world with all these modern pressures and, and interpersonal relationships that you have to think about also as you're building and going. Yeah. And then there's the, the, the fact that it seems like career resources are a natural necessity for success yeah. when women are finding themselves in these roles, right? Yeah. Have you been able to find toolkits and mentorship throughout your career uh, that have really helped you uh, mm -hmm. keep growing the way that you needed to grow? Mm -hmm. And how did you how did you end up stumbling upon them, if mm -hmm. or getting these you know mentors in your life, if that mm -hmm. happened for you? Yeah. No, that's a that's a great question and. You know, I'm from Ghana and we have a proverb that if you want to go far, you should go with someone. Because um, if you try to go at it alone, you won't go as far as you think. And some people misinterpret that to be like, oh, you will use people to get far. But I see it as you tap into the resources and wisdom that others have taken or have um, for whatever path you're on and then use better it to get further than they have which is what a mentor should be for you. A mentor is someone who should look at you and look into your future and say, in 20 years, I see this for you. So because I see this for you, I'm going to put you in a position that will prepare you for whatever stratospheric rise is coming for you in 20 years. And I have been very, very lucky that um, I've, my, my, grad, my college mentor actually, um, she was the one who got me into research. I've talked about her many times, Dr. Jody Schwartz. Um, Jody would never, I've never met somebody who would not let me give up because sometimes I love to throw tantrums. I am a big fan, like tantrum thrower, but I wouldn't throw it in public. I will throw it in private. I'd be like, this is hard. I want to stop. Jody would not let me give up. And I actually was just talking to her last week or two weeks ago. And mind you, I met her in college in twenty in two thousand and nine. It's been it's twenty twenty three. That's how long our friendship and mentorship has. You know, it started as a mentorship, but it's now become a friendship. And she, I remember her telling me that she's looking forward to calling me her colleague when I got my PhD. That was a, like that is that is something that is priceless to me. That she wants to see me be her, but even bigger. Mm -hmm. And so every time I, whenever I, you know, change a position, get a, a, an opportunity, she always messages me and says, I can't believe I'm so proud of you. This is, is what you're doing. And it's very exciting to have that. I think everyone needs a Jody in their corner. And not just an academic mentor, but you also need friends and family who want you to succeed. There is a difference between those who want you to succeed and those who are okay with your status quo. You want people to share in your dreams. And so sometimes you have to be intentional. You have to seek people who you know that if I'm having a bad day at work, I can reach out to them and troubleshoot it with them. Now, that doesn't mean that you're, they're only in your lives to troubleshoot your bad day with them. That means that you're also doing the same thing for them. 
you're probably seeing opportunities. You're encouraging each other to apply for bigger and better things. You want to be intentional about who you surround yourself with and who you allow into your circle. I know as a scientist, I, I'm about to say something that's very frou-frou, but I really do believe in energies because if people bring negative energies into your space, some people are energy vampires, right? Mm -hmm. They get, they take, but they don't give back. Um, you don't want that. So I think that personally, I've had to reach out and find resources because I'm on a career path that I haven't seen anyone do before. So that means I have to be innovative in looking for advice because no one has done this that I know and has done it this way. So then it's not like, oh, there is a nice little blueprint that I can just like go. But no, there is there is no pathway. I'm making the pathway. So then I'm being I'm reaching out to this person who has sort of kind of done something like this. Oh, how did you go about it? Oh, and this person, you are kind of adjacent to where I want to go in the future. Can you tell me how you succeeded, how you didn't succeed? And so it, it, it does require some like, you know, legwork. You have to put in effort, but you're trying to go for gold. So how do you think it's going to happen? You got to put in effort. <laughs> oh, and okay. Even as you're, as you were, you know, breaking all that down so beautifully, I'm also thinking about like how many times uh, gatekeeping can get in the way of growth and success, right? And accessibility to mm -hmm. resources is a huge part of whether or not a person is going to be able to actually achieve what they want to achieve, especially yeah. in a role that they have the first one occupying or they don't have, they have, they're still building that, uh, that support system around them that you spoke about, that you have yeah. with Jody, right? They haven't gotten themselves to Jody. So when you think about things like, um, even like having access to trainings for negotiation skills and things of that nature. Like, how do you feel about there being uh, access for women, especially like in these roles, to be able to get uh, access to training and advancement, uh, you know, like uh, the mindsets and things of that nature that they don't have to pay into in order to be able to access those things? Oh. <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that once you've learned something, you should share it as freely as you can, especially if it has helped you get this far or further than you ever even thought. And I am very open when people ask me, how did you get this role? I offer my services. I will look over your resume. I will share my resume with you. If you want to steal my template, it's not stealing, it's replication. Do you want to use the same template? Use it. How do I know it works? I used it to get a role. So clearly it works. I think that we need to be very careful um, in not being scared of sharing the spotlight because um, some people think that, oh, there's more than one voice at the table. No, let the voices be bigger. Let's all make room. All of us can fit at the table. The table is big enough. If it's not big enough, let's build a bigger table. I think that it's kind of sad that for a lot of women, you learn about, for instance, I learned about paycheck negotiation super late. Um, and I had to learn it from a family member. And I was lucky that they were like, oh, no, you should ask for this. You should ask for this. You should ask for this. It wasn't written down anywhere on the Internet. No one taught me that in graduate school. No one taught me that anywhere. So I feel like if there was a bank of resources where we could all just access and be like, OK, so we're starting a new job. This is what we're looking for. These are the benefits. These are the stock options. These are X, Y and Z. These are the basic necessities that we need as we go into a new role. I think that would be transformative and it would actually make us a stronger workforce, especially as women. Um, already there is that pay, uh, the, 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 lack, the equity, the lack of equity in pay. So we already have that. Like, let's not add gatekeeping. If you have access to information, 
please share it. Um, and now I'm not knocking on people that that's their, you know, that's that's their money making. You know, that's how they they pay the bills. Um, I understand that, but I think that some basics we can share for free. And it would be great if there was like a library online, and you just go in and it's like, you got a new job. What's next? It's pay uh, health health uh, health insurance. What to expect? What is the difference between FSA and HSA? <laughs> what is what is an RSU? <laughs> like, why you know? There's all everything is scattered everywhere. But if there was like a nice little library, you could just go there, and it had you know it had examples of women asking questions and people sharing scripts of how they did it. I think that would help us all in feeling a little stronger whenever we're negotiating, whenever we're moving into different roles, whenever we're asking for a promotion. I think that um, a template would be great um, and I would be happy to help create one. Um, be happy to be a part of a consortium that helps create one, honestly. I love it. I feel like you just identified a need. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find the time. I gotta find the time. Find the time. But uh, especially with that, you know, that storytelling aspect too, right? Which is so key to people being able to realize that, oh wait, like I'm not alone in this and you just read that alphabet soup of like it all these different things that you've never heard of before right and uh and if you don't know that you're supposed to negotiate with the recruiter you're supposed to negotiate with hr in relation to your salary yeah. uh if you're not in a state like california for example is saying like have transparency with what the mm -hmm. salary range is what the budget mm -hmm. range is but that mm -hmm. doesn't happen for everyone everywhere so Again, like to have that fluidity of information and conversation. I think you might have just tapped into something, then. Like, <laughs> might be some people listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we're kind of like wrapping this up, I'm thinking about I'm not the only one. Balance, right? And you you've touched on it a little bit. Like balance is so key for so many people as we're you know, the coming out of this, now this pandemic is endemic and we're thinking differently about uh, what we really want for our lives and ourselves and our communities and how we want to show up. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes balance begins with the word no, right? <laughs> I feel like you might have some thoughts I on saying no. <laughs> And the kind of balance it can't create. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of the word no. <laughs> I, um, I, oh my gosh, I, I learned in graduate school that you need to learn how to say no. And sometimes, and especially like as an immigrant, as a woman, you, I tend to sometimes look from a perspective of scarcity. I'm scared, like I say no to this opportunity, something bigger won't come around. But the universe is so big, there's no way something else is not gonna come. There's just no way. And so it's like, you, I have to go through this mental gymnastics to be like, you do not have the bandwidth, it's okay to say no and wait. Something else will, will pop up when you have the time, when you have the energy to dedicate 110% of your effort to it. And sometimes you need to say no for your health. I mean, it is documented that stress is a killer. It's not even like a suggestive killer. It's a killer. <laughs> it's it's bad. As somebody who studies cancer, cancer is stress. <laughs> like it's it's all you know. Stress. We have stress, so stress is a killer. And I remember listening to a podcast, and um, is this podcast? Um, am I allowed to mention the podcast? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. It's called Ear Hustle. Ear Hustle. And I like that name. It's a it's a podcast based out of San Quentin Prison. Oh. And they had an episode where they interviewed a man who had been on death row for over 20 plus years. 
and they asked him, how do you live every day? Like, how do you wake up knowing that today could be your last day? And he said that those of you on the outside, I would never forget this. He says, those of you on the outside are always planning, tomorrow I'm going to do this, tomorrow I'm going to do that. He said, for him, eternity is now. I have never forgotten that. And whenever I'm scared that something is not going to happen or something good is not going to come because I said no, I remember that eternity is now. Like, it's okay. Like, this is it. This future you're worried about, this is here. And it's okay that this is not happening now because you're tired. Rest. If today's your last day on earth, you have, you've rested. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with leaving and being rested. There's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, I if you take anything from this, just remember eternity is now. Because I mean, he's not wrong. No. We're not guaranteed the next minute. <laughs> like no. the only thing we have is now. And this this moment is our eternity. And some might think, then seize the moment. Or don't. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, like resting is also a way of seizing the moment. Rest is seizing the moment. It's like the minute you're leisurely, you feel like you haven't done anything, but you've done something. You've given your body a chance to rejuvenate. That is the greatest gift you could give to your future self is to take care of yourself now. Oh, I love that. Gifts to future selves. I mean, yeah, this is it. I am very intentional about that. I'm very, very intentional. Okay. I took so, my, I took my phone. <laughs> okay. I know that you spoken so eloquently about so many things. Oh, thank you. And we have we have something that we're trying out that we want to ask just like a couple of rapid fire questions. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So one of them, you kind of already answered because it was like, oh, but we you know you listen to any podcast or anything right now. I feel like you got into that a little bit with Air Hustle. I mean, I can get into more. You okay. Ask me. I, I love okay. podcasts. Okay. Me. Okay. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surprise you with the next oh. thing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So how do you relax when you are not working? Dance class. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you're back in school, like what class or subject did you struggle with the most when you were in school? Oh, chemistry. Really? Oh my God. Chemistry is like the toughest thing for me. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> yes. I love it. Thank you for being transparent. Okay. <laughs> Are you are you binging anything right now? What show? Oh, um, I just rewatched all of Derry Girls on Netflix. <laughs> really? Okay, that's still in my queue. I haven't even gotten into that yet. So, oh no, yeah, I'm gonna be moving that up. I'm gonna be moving that up. Yeah, I just rewatched okay. it. It's it's such a good show. It's fantastic. I love it so much. I love, I love it. Okay, <laughs> and then last but not least. What's the best advice you ever received? Oh, <laughs> be yourself. Everyone else is taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the best things. Yeah. yeah. I had yeah. read it somewhere, but then someone actually said it to me. And I was like, wait, really? They're not wrong. It's true. Right. Right. Yeah. It like wraps you in a warm a little hug of like, no, you can go ahead and occupy this space and time in your it body is, as yourself. It is a meditative sentence. I love it. Okay. It is. It is. Oh, Danielle, this has been fun. This has been enlightening. This has been 
just I, I don't know glorious and restful thank, <laughs> oh, you. thank you thank you thank you for, for sitting that. down with us thank you for sharing space thank you for diving into the things that you've been diving into and we're going to be sharing too like if you got moved by this conversation with danielle and you want to stay in contact with her we're going to have drop some for all of her socials and everything so that you can stay connected and we just uh we just dig what you do danielle <laughs> thank you Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. Okay, wonderful. So bye, you all. We'll see you next time on This Is What a Scientist Looks Like. Bye. bye. <laughs>